distinguished folks in the room. Chairman of uh, Djibouti Data Center is here, the chairman of CECOM is here, the CEO of Liquid in South Africa is here, uh, but also a member of the losing golf team, <laughs> uh, which I myself was part of that losing team. And, Okay. Yeah. Uh, as everybody can tell, Klaus has announced himself in the back. Of the room. Uh, growing up, I'm sure Klaus always sat in the back of the room in class because if he was in the front, the teacher would probably have a long day and get tired. In Sweden, when uh, Klaus was a little little kid growing up, I'm sure I'm sure that must have been fun. Klaus being a little kid growing up in Sweden for everyone here. Um, but in all seriousness, we appreciate uh, everyone coming. It's good to see uh, the team from OSI, Julian, good to see uh, friendly faces. Um, Ranji, thank you for coming. I uh, know you're doing some work uh, from Ethiopia down. And uh, the, the purpose of the, uh, uh, the data gathering meeting is to really um, present the cable uh, to the uh, global wholesale community. Uh, Angola Cables has had tremendous success in the last uh, four plus years. Uh, we've seen a tremendous evolution and growth uh, happen from uh, that the team really started from its infancy in terms of um, really starting out their international vision and expansion. And I, I would be uh, remiss if I, I didn't uh, uh, mention uh, that in the room today is the Chief Executive Officer of Angola Cables, the vision and leadership and the growth that's happened with WAX, with Monet, with Sachs, with Ango IX, with AngoNAT, the data center. Uh, Mr. Antonio News, if you could please give him a round of applause. So without uh, further ado, just some uh, housekeeping items. Uh, we will uh, have this uh, presentation available, a soft copy for anybody that would like one. Uh, just feel free to uh, contact us to email us. There's also a video stream uh, for folks that are unable to attend. So for example, Klaus, no doubt, Byron is sound asleep, cuddled up in bed. Um, that would be in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, that would be my guess as well. Um, so Byron wants to watch this on your Emirates flight home uh, in front of the bus. Uh, you guys can, uh, can can watch that on your iPads. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you, Klaus. Um, <laughs> But uh, in all seriousness, uh, if anybody has to go early, we completely understand. There is uh, uh, an 8 o'clock uh, uh, meeting schedule that many of you may have, and you may not be able to stay the full duration of the presentation. Feel free to ask any questions after the speaker is presented uh, from Angola Cables or Ocean Specialist, uh, as well as offline. We have the room here until about 9 a.m. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, introduce our, our first uh, speaker that uh, uh, we've been working with uh, for the last uh, two and a half years plus. Uh, very good friend and colleague. We work uh, uh, extensively with Archer Mendez. Archer is a uh, uh, engineering slash computer science graduate from the most prestigious technical college in all of Portugal. And a 12-year industry veteran from Nokia. Uh, Arthur is the uh, chief commercial officer of Angola Cables and is really going to give us a, a run through of the network and uh, exactly what's going on and how it's changing the telecom landscape. So please welcome Arthur Mendes. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, uh, Eric. You are in a good mood today. <laughs> Even if the African team lost. <laughs> and it was part of the African uh, team. Yes. Uh, no, thank you. I will try to, to be very quick uh, and uh, speak a, a bit about uh, our strategy and uh, the full look of, of the Mala Cables uh, project. And then uh, Perry and David will, will give some more detailed information in terms of, of the, the SACS and money, the two biggest projects that they are working on. For me, uh, essentially, uh, I put it almost everything on, on one slide, uh, and this, this, this is the, the, the full idea uh, where, where we are thinking about the, the strategy, and I call it normally paradigm shift of C cables, uh, because of the major announcement that we are making, that is SAC South Atlantic Cable System, the first ever uh, submarine cable made it on the South Hemisphere, connecting Africa to um, Latin America, that, that, that you could hear, so this is the difference. I was uh, joking yesterday night because I had, uh, I don't know, more than 10 meetings yesterday, and in most of the meetings uh, where we see the, the cable uh, map of the companies, that part is always missing, of course. So uh, most of the people have 
the, the connections on the North Hemisphere, it was the previous uh, connected and developed world, the West, the places with more cables, more than 15 cables, then started to develop uh, the connections to Asia, uh, and, uh, but there's still no uh, connected points between all, all, the, all the parts of the world. And we are trying to contribute uh, to that by, by making this connection. And of course, the, the, the main focus is to try to not only to collect all the traffic from Africa, west and east side, but also as, as we presented here, not well represented by the cables, but the several options that are today trying also to bring some traffic from the Middle East uh, and Asia, uh, also on a new south route. And why we think this is important? Because it's because when we look to the, to, to the, the regions of, in the world with the biggest development at this stage, we know clearly that this is Asia, Middle East and Asia, it's Africa uh, and Latin America. So why keep insisting in trying to connect it uh, on the North uh, Hemisphere uh, when the developed parts are uh, on, on the uh, south uh, part of the world. So that's why we are trying really to, to, to work and to create a, a, what I call a South Hemisphere route uh, to try to uh, give a new direction to, to the cable and shifting a bit to the paradigm that, that, that we are working on. In terms of projects, so we are aware we have uh, walks connecting South Africa to, to UK that uh, is, is uh, more than two years activity now uh, that suffered the, the, uh, a recent upgrade, so it's plenty of capacity there. Then there's uh, SACs that, that, that are already told, and then money uh, from Santos uh, to Fortaleza and up to, um, to Miami, that my colleagues will, will speak later on. Uh, of course, then there's two uh, good connections points for us, as we have Angola uh, or uh, home base, but we also have now Angola Cables Brazil uh, in Brazil, so we, we are trying to connect these points in a strong way. We have a uh, data center in both, both parts that I will show you uh, uh, quickly the two slides of it uh, because we really would like to push also for the contents and for the contents traffic on this, on this new route. Uh, trying to increase the, the connectivity to Africa and also uh, uh, decreasing the latencies uh, of CN's uh, approach to, to, to Africa and to Africa users. Because normally people don't try, don't, don't look to Africa uh, I say on a serious way, but if we look to the numbers of Africa, Africa is the second biggest continent in the world in terms of population. It's more than one million uh, people uh, in Africa now, and half of that, or more than half of that population is less than 25 years. So it's a very young population uh, uh, that wants to, to, to enjoy the benefits of using internet and having access to all the contents that are now available. And it's one of the fastest growing areas in the world. So there's a place that, as African, I always say it's a place to invest. Uh, as I told you, so in, in, in Angola, we have uh, Angola Amp, it's our data center in Rwanda. We are proud to say that it's the, the place with the, the biggest interconnectivity in Angola. All the operators are there, the national operators, but also some regional and international uh, operators that are connected there with their own space there. The, the data center is almost full uh, and is the place, of course, where we could access also uh, the, the full mesh of cables, of Angola cables, as uh, the interconnection from the CLES to, to the data center uh, also belongs to us and, and we will be able to, to interconnect. Then let me show you a bit of uh, what we expected to do in Fortaleza. <coughs>
uh, as you can see, it's a nice, nice design and, uh, and a good investment that we want to make there. We believe that Fortaleza deserted uh, to have it. It's, they have seven uh, submarine cables connected there, plus six cables under construction at this stage. So we really would like to, to have uh, uh, a good meet me point uh, so that we could then share our traffic and bring the traffic, as I told you, from Middle East, from Africa, uh, to interconnect with all Latin America and also North America. So it's the place where we want. Just to finalize, I want to speak about uh, Angola and IXP, we call it Angonix, uh, the Internet Exchange Point of Angola. The, we just commemorate the first year now, uh, mid of March this year. We are proud to announce that we are already in the third place in terms of peak traffic in Africa, uh, only beaten by South Africa and Nigeria at this stage. Uh, we have made a peak traffic in January of 4.5 gigabytes traffic and in average traffic we are already number two of Africa. And uh, only with, with the one year activity, uh, all the, the other ones have four, five, six, seven, uh, the, the people to all this one, I believe, have more than 10 years in Africa. So I believe we have something that, that we are also working on uh, in having the, the local traffic to be exchanged locally and, and to increase the, the capacities of exchanging that. We have already 12, uh, 12 active members. It's all, it's all for my part. Um, are there any uh, questions uh, for for Arthur at this time that anybody has in the open setting, or uh, feel you can feel free to ask Arthur offline later? Do it. Um, Arthur, you uh, you showed the connection to Asia and, and the, you know, the opportunity that's there. I've also worked on other projects that looked at that opportunity, so I was just wondering, I mean, maybe in terms of percentage, <coughs> percentage of the east-west traffic, <coughs> how much do you think you could see going around Africa? It's, it's, a, it's a, good, a good question. Uh, I'm not worried in terms of the top capacity. I say that if we are able to get one or two percent of the traffic that goes uh, this stage, be enough to, to be to, to, to make that, that route uh, a good option. And in terms in terms of like you see all the studies that we run, uh, in most of the cases the, the, uh, the Middle East the, to interconnect with Latin America is the best uh, Latin sea route. The, uh, the the key takeaway uh, message from the South Atlantic cable system and we've delivered this presentation in Honolulu, we had this presentation in New York, I was given in Bangkok in Southeast Asia, is that the South Atlantic Cable System is contract in force. Um, there were some slight delays, but if all of you leave this morning and uh, you're still waking up or having your coffee, remember that the key takeaway is that SACS is contract in force. It is a go, it's happening. So, uh, if you look at Monet, the Brazil-Florida cable being contracted for so well on track, well underway. Uh, if you look at WAX, which has been in service for a few years and Angola Cables is selling aggressively, now SACS being contracted in force. The pieces of the puzzle, the foundation, the fundamental building blocks are coming together. The growth in AngoNAP, the data center, uh, I believe AngoNAP, the communication facility is almost sold out. So there's a the plans or Fabio is going to have to go sell more co-location. But uh, there, there are plans for a second uh, data center for co-location and hosting. And the growth of internet exchange, uh, IX traffic being over 4 gigs with Akamai, with Cloudflare, with Google, supporting the egress has shown tremendous growth uh, in Angola as well as surrounding countries like Namibia and what have you within West Africa. So uh, Julian, good question. Um, and uh, just uh, before we introduce our next speaker, are there any other questions uh, for Arthur in terms of the South Atlantic Cable or any of the topology that was uh, uh, given here today? Our good friend uh, from Verizon? Yes. Uh, it used to be. Oh, it used to be. Okay, hold on. Just hold on. Let me get you the mic. Just hold on. Yeah, I noticed on the uh, map you showed across Africa route. I mean, there's been many discussions about starts and stops and pieces and parts. Can you provide an update on the status of the cross-continent route itself? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
architecture. I see something, something interesting that I would like to, uh, to, to, to work on, and there's some developments made. In terms of Angola, we are only missing a small portion of it uh, near the border, more or less 100 kilometers. And Zambia is also developing on their side because they are also missing less than 100 kilometers. The rest of Tanzania is all done, and a great part of the Zambia is already done. So, when these uh, two pieces that are under construction uh, finalize, we will have that interconnection. Thank you. Thank you. Klaus, any questions? You're okay back there? I'm good. All right, eggs are okay? All right, good. Okay, then let's uh, introduce our next speaker uh, from Motion Specialists. Uh, very pleased to uh, have uh, Perry Wright. Uh, Perry is a distinguished uh, submarine cable expert with uh, 25, 30, <laughs> 35, sorry, 30 years plus of experience. Uh, Perry's a graduate uh, in uh, physics uh, in the United Kingdom from University of Essex uh, for his undergraduate, his first degree, and his second degree as a postgraduate from the University of Strathclyde, which uh, I'm going to go back to my uh, mulligan because uh, I can't pronounce that. Uh, but no, in all seriousness, uh, please welcome Perry. And uh, Perry, thank you. Good morning, all. Um, I'd like to start by thanking also for stealing my thunder and showing that great presentation on the fourth and later landing station. It's not just a famous <laughs> um, Okay, uh, as Arthur mentioned, uh, and as uh, Eric specifically made great points of mention, SACS is contract in force. Um, we've had the initial meetings with the supplier in EC and construction work or the planning for it and procurement is on the way. Um, I'm very pleased to actually be the project manager for the system given that it will be the first cable system across the uh, South Atlantic. And I'm not sure what I'm going to find on the way across, but I think it's going to be an interesting ride as we go. Um, as Arta mentioned, we have uh, two landing stations, it's a very simple system coming out of uh, Sangano in Angola, uh, which is an existing station where wax lands. Uh, we are going to be landing our former laser at the new data center and landing station, which is adjacent to the landing station for the Monet cable. The system is a 4 5 pair system, 40 terabits, 100 waves, 100 gigawatts. That's the initial capacity, I suspect, that we can operate before we get to the end of the construction. If I'll to continue to sell the way it has been. As I said, uh, supplier selection has actually been concluded <coughs> over two years ago uh, when we signed initial contracts with NEC. Uh, the intervening time was in uh, the financing range that uh, Arta, uh, sorry, that uh, Eric uh, mentioned earlier. But with all of that now taken care of, um, pretty much on schedule at uh, our final plan date, we were able to go into contracting force at the end of uh, March, and we've been actively working this as a live project for the last seven weeks. Um, NEC has contracted with a tier one installer, so we're actually looking at quite a large installation vessel. We intend to lay this cable in a single load. Um, so I believe we're planning to coming out of uh, San Diego way into Brazil. Um, as I mentioned, um, mentioned, we're building a brand new data center in Fortaleza. I don't have a snazzy presentation on the data center, just a couple of pictures I stole from before it. But uh, construction on this is, is well in hand. Um, I'm seeing good plans of work that interface with the dates we need to land the cable in Fortaleza. So at the moment, given Angola Cable's experience of permitting in Brazil, uh, particularly permitting for this site, which the, they've owned the land for the site for some time now, there is uh, a very good um, control up of construction work and it shouldn't impose any uh, delays on landing the cable in Brazil. Uh, the Sangano station is actually a beautiful station given that, uh, <coughs> that 
for the longest time it's only had the one cable coming in there. But if any of you have ever got a reason to go to Rwanda, and I suspect uh, uh, Arthur would be very happy to host any of you that want to come over there, take an opportunity to go down to the station. It's actually a very nice area. I can, I can personally guarantee that the local lobsters are really good. <laughs> but it's a great place to make cable. Uh, and in particular, it works very well for SACS because they had the foresight when they built the WAC system to build the cable station and the OSP route out to a site that was able to land multiple cables. So we have to do no terrestrial construction at all in Sagana to land the SACS cable. We'll bring the cable onto the beach and from there on in, the duct workers will be in place and there's plenty of space and power in the WAX landing station, sorry, the Sagana landing station for the SACS cable. As I said, and uh, we're going to keep reiterating, we are contracting the force. Uh, the picture here with uh, Dr. Yosan in the front from NEC, who's worked diligently with us over the last few years bringing this system together, and with Tom Soldier obviously prevalent in the back. Um, we were able to have a very, very good kickoff meeting a few weeks ago in Luanda. It was very nice to have NEC bring their whole team into. Luanda to meet with the whole of the Angola Cable Organization uh, for three days of uh, very, very efficient and effective meetings um, to really get this project underway. A couple of key points. Um, as most of you are probably aware, uh, it's important to have government support in Angola for work being done, and SACS is fully supported and endorsed by the Angolan government. Uh, which we also see as having great uh, support for us with any permanent work. The good news, as I've said, because we already have the landing station, there's a limited amount of permanent work that will be required for Angola. The, uh, the SAC program underway at the end of March is a 24 month program. So if everything stays the plan at the moment, there's no reason why it shouldn't. We should be ready to load in uh, the middle of 2017 with a planned RFS date for uh, the middle of 2018. With any luck, we may actually repeat those dates. And uh, that's it. Any questions? No. I'll be around for a while afterwards, so if uh, anybody wants to sit me up, please come find me. Thank you very much. So uh, I think so far we're uh, running on time, uh, which is a good thing, but I think it's important we acknowledge that uh, some folks have just joined us in the room. Garai, good morning. Bon dia. Good morning, bon dia. Good to see you. Good to see you. Feel free to grab some coffee, Garai. Thank you. As always, good to see you. Thank <laughs> um, Our next, uh, next speaker uh, from Ocean Specialists uh, from OSI uh, is going to be discussing the Monet system. Uh, Monet is uh, a network between Brazil and Florida, uh, and that's a very high level description. Uh, Mr. David Willoughby um, is the program manager uh, for the uh, Monet cable. Uh, Dave is a graduate of uh, Purdue University, fairly close to here. There's graduate work uh, in the state of Indiana. Uh, I have the pleasure of living in the same old town as Dave, so I see Dave frequently. Um, Dave and I are uh, fairly good friends. We've worked uh, together for over a decade. And uh, uh, no better man to talk about the, uh, the technicalities of Monet than Mr. Dave will give him the game. Good morning, folks. My name is Dave Willoughby. And I've uh, had the pleasure of working on uh, the Monet system for three years now. So it's a, it's a great project. I'm happy to speak about it. Um, the cable system itself, uh, is three landing points connecting Boca Raton, Florida, Fortaleza, and Santos in Brazil. It's approximately 10,500 kilometers. Uh, it's a six fiber pair cable system of which uh, Angola Cables owns two fiber pairs. Uh, we have both express uh, and we have capabilities. Angola Cables, the two fiber pairs we have, one uh, is a full fiber pair uh, drops in Fortaleza from Boca Raton and uh, Santos, that's a 120 uh, wave uh, design. Uh, it's a, a full 100 gigabit uh, system. 
Uh, the other uh, fiber repair, we have a OADM uh, filter, which allows us to have Express as well as Drum. Uh, Express being Santos to what we're talking The summary of the project itself, uh, we have a turn, turnkey uh, cable system supply contract with TD Subcom. Uh, we're organized in purchasing the system uh, as a group of purchasers, which are Angola Cables, uh, Google, Albert Telecom, and Antel. Uh, the project is being managed by uh, an expert group, which is synonymous with a uh, commercial and a procurement group uh, structure that's managing the day-to-day -day operations uh, of the supply contract with the supplier as well as with the, the purchaser group itself, uh, building out its, its responsibilities. Uh, and the expert group reports to an executive council. The executive council is staffed by uh, executive members of each of the purchasers group and is uh, decision-making uh, uh, for the, uh, the expert group. The uh, status of the contract uh, uh, signed with Subcom uh, as of October of 2014 and in parallel with that, we have a joint build agreement with the other purchasers of the project that define you know, how we work together to complete this system. The cable landing station activities, these are uh, construction activities, are actively underway. The marine survey is complete. Uh, cable and wet plant uh, manufacturing is taking place. Uh, presently, uh, more than 50% of the wet plant is, is complete. Uh, the marine uh, installation program has commenced. Uh, the marine installation program is two mainly shiploads and a prelate shore end program, uh, uh, both of which are underway as we speak. Uh, we're targeting to complete construction at the end of 2016, and Angola Cables is looking to be in commercial service in 2017. And this last slide you know, summarizes where we are with the two new portions of the, of the angle of cables network. So SACS and LA connecting into what we already have with WAX and uh, our plans to uh, connect, uh, connect on. That is uh, a quick overview of LA. I'm happy to take questions now. Questions that uh, anyone has in an open setting for, for David on the Brazil Florida cable mode? Anyone? Go ahead once. If anybody has any questions uh, offline, yeah, David and Perry will be available to, um, uh, and very happy to, to field any questions you have that you may not want to uh, ask in an open setting, such as interconnections, landing stations, uh, how things are going to go, the F to the F, for example. Uh, there's more detail and granularity that you require. Uh, in terms of the um, the formal um, uh, agenda, we've effectively completed that. Uh, there has been some folks that have entered the room later. I saw the gentleman standing up there is from Neutrona. Uh, we have some other folks that just came in um, that I recognize from, from the golf outing on, on Sunday. Um, but in, in all seriousness, uh, that does conclude the, the formal uh, aspect of the presentation. We've reserved about uh, 10 minutes for a QA. and a um, Are there any other larger uh, questions that um, anybody has in terms of um, the network, the South Atlantic, uh, AngoNAP, AngoIX, uh, anything in general that uh, anybody would like to raise? No? Okay. So again, I think the key, uh, the key points to, to emphasize is that SACS is contracting force. Um, so feel free to uh, propagate that message when you leave here. Uh, tell folks that the system is contracting force because it is in fact contracting force. Uh, Monet is well underway. Um, AngoNAP is uh, effectively sold out and there's a second data center that's being looked at uh, in Rwanda to uh, support the demand that's being seen locally. And the AngoIX uh, ranking, as Archer mentioned, for Angola Cables is third so far in Africa and effectively only 12, 13 months. So we've seen tremendous uh, IP transit growth and egress savings uh, in West Africa with the team, Darwin and Fabio are working really quite hard. Um, we do have a, um, if I'm not mistaken, a raffle. So um, the um, folks that have not dropped their name cards, their business cards into the, uh, 
uh, the silver bucket as you came in uh, is being uh, walked around the room. Class, I'm not sure if you're eligible. You can't put five parks in. How did it do this? No, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> so. But if anybody has not put their um, their card in, feel free to do so at this time. Okay. Uh, if you work for Angola Cables, I don't think you can. Yeah. This is Chicago. We know how things work here. But. So, no, which means for guys. Uh, okay, so we're going to uh, we're going to call Jamie from OSI to come down. Give uh, Jamie a big uh, hand. <laughs> Jamie's going to uh, pick out the uh, winning uh, winning raffle, and if I'm not mistaken, the prize is an Apple Watch. Yep, right here. Right here, Apple Watch. Uh, so you can make sure you're at the gym doing your Fitbit slash Apple Watch push-ups, super burpees, and the winner is. Drum roll. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Let me. <laughs> so uh, we have a winner here, uh, based in London, from Hutchison Global Communications, from HGC. Uh, the pronunciation of the surname is Okoruduro. Thank you. <laughs> that, uh, that concludes the presentation. Uh, we're going to be putting up the, uh, the larger slides for Saks and Monet from the initial part of the presentation if you missed that. Uh, we have the room for another hour, about 50 minutes to an hour. Feel free to enjoy the food, coffee, and just business networking. Once again, thank you all for coming. Have a great ITW and safe travels home.